Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Reuse Company webinars. My name is Cecilia, and I will be hosting today's webinar. We have with us my colleague Jose Fuentes, and he will talk about automatic traceability discovery for systems engineering. You will be muted during the webinar, but if you have any questions or comments, you can use the chat box. But please address your comments to the reuse company and not to the presenter. If you have any technical issues, uh, please use the chat box or send a mail to support at reusecompany.com. The webinar will be recorded, and in a few days, we will send you the link to the recording. Uh, this is the agenda for the webinar. First, we will have a description of the company and the presenter. Then Jose will introduce the traceability concepts for us. He will talk about traceability in complex systems engineering projects. And after that, he will show us Traceability Studio. Finally, we will have some time for questions and answers. Now let me say some words about the reuse company. Our mission is to provide a knowledge-centric approach to leverage system engineering activities to our customers. The reuse company was created in 1999 as a spin-off from a university in Madrid by system and software engineers. Our headquarters is in Madrid, but we also have offices in London and in Stockholm. Since the company is a spin-off from the Carlos Tercero University of Madrid, research and innovation is in our DNA. And about 10% of our revenues are dedicated to research and development. The reuse company is also actively involved in several large European research projects like Crystal, Mass, and WIVAM2. The Reuse Company is also called TRC. We like to say that it's easy to remember if you think of T, like in traceability, R, like in reuse, and C, or almost Q, like in quality. So who is using our technology? Here you can see some companies that are users of our system. They come from quite different industries, like aerospace and defense, energy, automation, and healthcare. Now let me introduce you to the presenter, Jose. He is Chief Operating Officer at the Reuse Company and has been the Product Manager of the Requirements Quality Suite tools for more than five years. He has the INCOSE uh, CSEP certification and is a member of the board of the Spanish chapter of INCOSE. He is also an active contributor to the INCOSE Guide for Writing Requirements. So let's start with the presentation. We hope this topic will be interesting for you. Thank you, Cecilia, and uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm uh, very happy today to join you in this uh, webinar, uh, mainly because uh, this is the first time uh, our webinars are kind of uh, changing gears a little bit and uh, addressing a different topic other than uh, requirements and requirements quality. So this is a um, uh, webinar on traceability and uh, a webinar where I will uh, introduce you a new member of, the, uh, of, of the, our family of tools of our systems in the street. And uh, this is all about uh, traceability. So what is uh, traceability? Uh, firstly, uh, traceability, we can find uh, this concept. Uh, we, we can find uh, traceability all over the industry and our um, normal and regular life. Uh, uh, because uh, traceability is the capacity to find uh, where a product uh, was made and which uh, raw materials were uh, used when it was created and with, uh, with uh, which uh, additional components uh, it was uh, created and how it was produced, where where it was stored and uh, how it has been released to, to you all along the, the logistic chain. So it is like uh, when uh, you visit uh, a restaurant and you order a burger, you want to know which kind of meat uh, it was used with, what kind of uh, bread, uh, how it was uh, cooked, with uh, which additional ingredients aside of the meat. And regarding the meat, you want to know even uh, where the the coke was uh, was uh, uh, bread and, and rice, right? So this is uh, this is uh, traceability in, in normal life. And now traceability in uh, if we get uh, or try to get uh, closer to uh, our uh, industries and business. Uh, traceability, uh, or let's say a simplified version of what uh, traceability could be, uh, is represented in this uh, picture, uh, where you can find requirements and use cases on the top, uh, 
and the test cases uh, uh, on the on the first column, and uh, just uh, by clicking or checking these uh, these cells or these uh, these uh, checkboxes, uh, uh, it is uh, how traceability is represented in in simple in simple projects. So it seems that uh, this could be a very good starting point, uh, just uh, uh, managing these uh, simple uh, views of, of traceability. Uh, it allows uh, to, to check the completeness uh, of, of the test, which is important for the verification of our systems, just to know that uh, we have addressed uh, all, all of our needs in the, uh, in the test uh, uh, scenarios, in the different test scenarios in our, in, in, and in our testing plan. Uh, it ensures the implementation uh, meets uh, with the specification. Uh, it could be, let's say, enough uh, for some uh, simple projects, uh, mainly for software projects, but uh, clearly it is not enough in complex projects. Uh, it is not uh, supporting this simple matrix, it's not supporting the, the composition of our requirements or designs or risks or uh, any other work products that are uh, generated uh, all along the, the V uh, cycle. And of course, uh, this uh, simpli uh, simplistic approach is not uh, satisfying the standards like the DO family or the ISO 2662 or uh, uh, any other uh, similar um, standards. So clearly, in, in uh, traceability in, in complex uh, systems and projects, it has to involve uh, other activities and other um, and uh, other capabilities, mainly because um, uh, this uh, is a very complex scenario. Let's say uh, I, I uh, took uh, this uh, slide and this uh, mm, uh, picture from uh, Ericsson. It is rather old, but it is uh, uh, just a matter of uh, example of what uh, we can find in, in, in our regular scenario where uh, daily we have to deal with uh, a very uh, large and heterogeneous amount of, uh, of uh, tools that uh, sometimes are uh, created from the very beginning to collaborate somehow, but uh, in most of the cases, uh, all these tools are not uh, uh, designed from the beginning to be uh, collaborating in, in, a, in a complex ecosystem of tools, right? So we have to provide uh, some sort of uh, means uh, to interoperate uh, all this. And uh, this is one of the key concepts uh, behind uh, uh, the tool that I'm uh, presenting today, uh, this idea of interoperability. Uh, I, I normally like to distinguish between the concept interoperability and intraoperability. It seems that uh, uh, there are many tools and uh, approaches uh, in the industry uh, um, uh, speaking about interoperability, and however, in our understanding, it is more intraoperability because uh, sometimes it is just a matter of uh, communicating, uh, let's say, for, exa for example, requirements management tool with other requirements management tool. But uh, it is more complex when you have to communicate, when it comes to communicate requirements with models, with simulations, with uh, test cases, with uh, so all these kind of heterogeneous work products are generated uh, along the the V model, right? So uh, this is our approach where similar to, to the previous example, you can find different logos here representing different uh, uh, tools and the different uh, assets uh, generated uh, along the V cycle. And of course, uh, generated uh, in um, uh, by or, or managed by tools from different tool vendors and sometimes uh, not uh, um, including the capability of, of being connected among them, right? So our approach is to to use um, OSLC, Open Services for Lifecycle Collaboration, as a means of uh, representing a, the common knowledge uh, ontology for the entire project. So this is what uh, uh, Traceability Studio is all about. So Traceability in Large uh, Projects uh, is providing you or is uh, uh, leveraging uh, project quality because um, uh, it allows you to check, for instance, uh, whether or not all your requirements are properly tested. Uh, uh, with regards to completeness, uh, you know that uh, we like to approach uh, quality uh, from these uh, three uh, different uh, quality dimensions, correctness, completeness, and consistency. So with regards to completeness, uh, it allows you to know whether or not uh, you have considered every high-level requirements in your in your um, product and uh, later in your in, in, in the verification of this product. Uh, it allows you to, to check whether you have created all the expected work products uh, following these requirements. Regarding uh, project management or project control, let's say that it allows you to control gold plating or scope creep. 
And of course, it's prov it provides you with uh, visibility. To me, uh, one of the most important topic uh, of this kind of uh, traceability management tools is, is the visibility of, of the status of the project. And of course, it uh, leverages also uh, collaboration among different uh, um, uh, roles and different team members, uh, avoiding this kind of uh, working by silos and providing you with this centralized uh, representation of the, of the project, right? So starting by uh, with a joke, let's say that uh, uh, these uh, guys are uh, dealing with a complex project and uh, uh, this guy in blue uh, representing the project manager is interested in knowing what is the, what is the current status of the project. And uh, guess what? Uh, the answer is, uh, wow, yes, sir, we are 90% done. Uh, probably you have heard uh, of this 90% uh, done many times, because 90% uh, of the times I ask uh, this question, uh, the answer is 90%. Uh, so this is what uh, this other guy is, is thinking, and of course, uh, probably the last uh, guy is, is thinking, wow, we need a kind of a traceability management tool, and uh, why not uh, giving a chance to traceability studio? So. OSLC, for those of you who are not uh, familiar with this uh, standard, uh, OSLC Open Services for Lifecycle Collaboration is a well-established standard uh, uh, aiming to provide uh, intra and interoperability uh, in uh, complex projects. Uh, there are different uh, domains for OSLC, uh, OSLC for requirements or OSLC for quality management. Uh, our approach is to provide uh, a new uh, domain within the OSLC family. And uh, this is what we call OSLC for knowledge management, where we have created our own resource shape. We have uh, uh, provided the serialization and uh, uh, some additional function, uh, functionality and interfaces. Uh, the serialization, sorry, the resource shape uh, for this uh, OSLC KM is what uh, we call system representation language. It's a kind of uh, common language uh, to represent uh, different uh, types of, uh, of resources. Uh, all this specification is publicly available uh, through this uh, link that uh, you can find uh, in the screen now. And uh, it allows us, as I said, to represent uh, different kind of uh, artifacts from uh, textual requirements or textual, textual uh, test cases definitions or risk definitions in a, in a FMEA approach or but uh, also uh, models, simulations. All these could be represented in, into this uh, system representation language and is stored in a common repository that uh, was the, the one I was uh, uh, showing you some slides uh, uh, ago, right? So, uh, traceability in complex projects, of course, uh, it is a must in this kind of projects. It is requested by standards and good practices like uh, ISO uh, uh, safety uh, family or the DO family, and it provides visibility, as I said, uh, from our projects. However, uh, it is normally a very tedious and manual uh, task, and it involves a connection of tools that uh, are not easily uh, well connected or designed to be, to be connected. So we need a kind of a professional uh, traceability tool to properly deal with this activity. And uh, I'm uh, proud, as I said, uh, I'm proud to, to introduce you with the Traceability Studio, a new member for the Systems Engineering Suite. So let me go through the main capabilities of, of this tool uh, before I start uh, with, uh, with a demo of, of the tool itself. So uh, I like uh, to see four main blocks of uh, functionality uh, for this uh, tool, at least uh, in the current version of the tool. So let me start with the, with the connection and the different types of connections we are dealing with. So uh, uh, nowadays, uh, the tool is capable of uh, connect, uh, let's say, in a native way uh, with uh, different tools in the market. Uh, mainly, you know that uh, we used to be known as a uh, requirements uh, company. So mainly requirements management tools like uh, IBM Doors or PTC Integrity or Visual Requirements, which is not in the list, but uh, it is, of course, integrated, or RecIF and uh, some other standards. Uh, of course, OSLC is, uh, is another key topic here, allowing uh, us to connect uh, uh, to requirements, uh, requirements model, uh, sorry, requirements and models and, and the other kinds of, of tools. And uh, you can find here some other logos for, uh, from uh, uh, modeling tools. Right. So this, uh, all these uh, logos are directly connected uh, using native APIs, while other uh, tools could be connected uh, using our OSLC capabilities. So this is uh, uh, this is the first screenshot of the tool. So I hope uh, you you like the tool. And uh, in this screenshot, uh, you can see how 
the first step uh, in in dealing with a traceability project is creating what uh, we call the project map. So this map, which is what uh, you can see in this screen, uh, is uh, just a sequence of uh, different uh, uh, link modules that uh, you can uh, you can find the list on the left, and uh, on the right hand side of the screen you can find a visual representation of these uh, of these models, where you find the different uh, documents and the different links that uh, we are managing uh, within this project. Um, uh, in the right hand side, you can see that uh, some of these boxes representing different uh, uh, data sources are having uh, specific icons like uh, doors icon or PTC icon or whatever, while some others are represented by uh, the OSLC icon, meaning that uh, uh, this connection has been uh, done through our OSLC KEM uh, uh, technology that uh, I was uh, introducing um, a moment ago. So this is uh, all about uh, the connection capabilities. Now the main capabilities are uh, the traceability itself, where of course we manage uh, traceability among uh, different work products uh, uh, coming from these uh, uh, connections. Uh, we provide an impact analysis and we provide a graphical representation of the work items. So this is uh, now the tool again, where uh, you can find how uh, different uh, um, uh, different uh, types of uh, traces can be created. Out of the box, uh, you will find uh, probably the ones that are represented in this screen. However, you can very easily create uh, your own uh, types of traceability on top of on top of this tool. You can also manage uh, the types of uh, links and traceability in our tool Knowledge Manager. Uh, for those of you familiar with this tool, uh, in fact, what uh, we are doing uh, in the Traceability Studio can be also accessed uh, from uh, from the Knowledge Manager. So all these new types of uh, traces in here uh, are traces uh, also represented in Knowledge Manager. So this screen is, is the main screen for, for addressing um, the traceability between elements. Uh, uh, there are two uh, uh, sources or data sources connected here. In this case, uh, both are uh, requirements uh, documents in, in doors in this case. And uh, you can find that uh, there are some uh, links and uh, arrows in here, in, in this uh, column here and also this column here. These are the elements that uh, are a link. Of course, you can have additional information as you will see in the video. Just by right-clicking on the arrows, you can find all these uh, uh, all the information related to, to these traces. And uh, creating a new trace in the tool is as easy as uh, picking two elements from both uh, sides and clicking on the Add a button here on the center. So this will uh, provide you with a new entry here, which are the the traces between these uh, two uh, uh, data sources. And with regards to the graphical representation that I was mentioning before. Um, uh, when it comes to connect uh, uh, textual elements uh, like uh, a requirement in the right hand side of this screenshot, uh, uh, of course, we uh, can represent uh, or we can show the textual uh, part of this requirement coming in this case from uh, IBM doors, or we can we can represent also the graphical representation uh, in a different screen, not in this one. And uh, on the left hand side of this screen, what I have done is uh, we have connected uh, this requirement with, uh, with a model element. In this case, it is a Simulink uh, uh, element uh, simulating, uh, simulating this, uh, this heater uh, in the air conditioning system. And uh, you, can, you can see the graphical representation, which is automatically captured when uh, we connect uh, to modeling uh, uh, data sources. And in here in this screenshot, uh, this is just uh, representing the impact analysis, or let's say, in other words, uh, what are the different uh, traces up and down, upstream and downstream, uh, from the selected uh, work item to other work items in other uh, data sources. So the following uh, block of uh, capabilities uh, is what uh, we call semantics. Uh, you know that uh, we are applying artificial intelligence and natural language processing uh, um, uh, to analyzing uh, different types of uh, work products. Uh, this is what uh, we do for, for the quality of requirements, for instance. Uh, we have also applied uh, this kind of, or let's say, a similar technology uh, to leverage uh, the way or automatize, uh, automatize as much as possible the way we are we are dealing with um, we are dealing with um, 
with uh, the traceability of, uh, of, uh, of different work products. So let me uh, introduce you a little bit uh, what is this uh, semantic uh, capability. So probably some of you already know this, uh, this, uh, uh, let's say this definition of what an ontology is. So this is how we see an ontology. Uh, first of all, uh, if we start with the layer number one, is, uh, is, um, we are dealing with the vocabulary of, of the elements that uh, we are, let's say the vocabulary of the domain uh, that uh, we are addressing. So this is just in this first layer, it is just a plain list of, of uh, vocabulary entries, or let's say that it could be something like uh, something like a glossary. Then we find the second layer. Uh, this second layer is where we we link things together. But this is not uh, uh, the way we we link uh, things together by means of traceability. It is more uh, how uh, knowledge is organized. Let's say in this uh, second layer. So in the second layer, we provide uh, uh, different types of links between uh, knowledge items. Uh, so for instance, uh, we can represent uh, uh, taxonomy of, of different items in this second layer, or we can represent in here how uh, how a, a physical uh, system is decomposed. So we can we can find here a high level architecture for for your systems, or let's say the product breakdown structure uh, is is uh, represented in this uh, second layer. Then the third layer, uh, uh, most of the times in, in our experience, we have to deal with uh, textual products, textual work products. So, uh, and this pattern layer is where we represent the grammar for well-formed uh, textual items. And when it comes to, uh, uh, for the tool to understand what, uh, what uh, uh, a statement in natural language means, then it comes uh, to the formalization, which is translating this natural language uh, into something that uh, uh, an, a computer can understand. And uh, by means of this formalization stage, uh, layer number four, what we do is we translate between textual and not textual artifacts into uh, the language that I was introducing uh, before, this uh, system representation language. And of course, the final layer, uh, we address the, the reasoning layer. Reasoning layer, uh, so far in the um, in the um, uh, in the tools that we have uh, uh, we have I have been presenting uh, a lot of times uh, regarding requirements quality. The reasoning is just uh, to analyze and to determine the level of quality for uh, for an asset. However, uh, in this uh, traceability tool, we have changed uh, this reasoning. Now the reasoning is uh, is not uh, addressing uh, the quality of uh, work products, but uh, rather it is. Uh, helping uh, uh, engineer to, to find out uh, uh, missing traces or helping raising these traces. Remember what I said at the beginning, that uh, traceability is normally, traditionally, it is a kind of a tedious and manual activity. And uh, now with the help of, of uh, these semantic uh, capabilities and with the help of this reasoning, we can uh, leverage a little bit uh, this activity so that it is not so tedious, right? So let me show you some examples. Uh, uh, in here, we can find uh, two different requirements. If we, if, if you just uh, have a quick uh, read of these uh, two requirements, it seems uh, at the first uh, glance, it seems that uh, these two requirements are different. Uh, however, uh, when you analyze in detail, uh, you can find, especially if you have the proper information from the from the ontology. The ontology again is represented by this colored uh, ball that you can see here. Um, uh, considering that uh, in this ontology we can. Uh, have a different kind of information like equivalences between target and hit or uh, semantic clusters that I was introducing before, uh, just to, to show that uh, different actions like to identify, to discover, to detect, to find could be having a similar meaning. And of course, a taxonomy uh, saying that a radar is a kind of electromagnetic sensor and in, in terms, this, uh, this sensor is a kind of electromagnetic device and so on and so forth. Then by having this information beforehand in the, in the ontology, we can uh, say, or the two can automatically say that uh, these two requirements are very similar in meaning and are pretty much alike, right? So uh, this is key uh, topic for the discovery of, of missing traces and uh, helping uh, in the identification of, of uh, traces by an automatic uh, analyzer, right? Another similar example is uh, starting with this uh, uh, simple model. This is a CML, uh, CML uh, block uh, diagram. Uh, the way we represent uh, this block diagram in, a, in our SRL language is, is uh, very straightforward because it is just uh, representing relationships between different concepts. So the representation is this in blue. This is a small piece of the uh, overall representation. 
If uh, on the left hand side we start uh, by analyzing textual uh, requirements, we can find that uh, the representation is, is exactly the same. So um, uh, once we, we, we can have this uh, SRL, the system representation for, for these two word products, it is pretty easy for our tool to determine that, uh, sorry, to determine that uh, these two uh, pieces of uh, information, the textual requirements on the left and this uh, simple block diagram are in fact uh, meaning exactly the same. So this uh, help us uh, to identify automatically uh, 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 traces in our tool traceability studio. So, uh, summarizing what are the semantic capabilities that we provide uh, thanks to this uh, semantic technology, we can have uh, on, the, on the left uh, this uh, uh, semantic suggestion. So, new traces can be automatically suggested by the tool. Uh, following different algorithms, you will find that uh, how uh, out of the box uh, you have uh, some semantic algorithms. However, the tool allows you even to generate your own algorithms. So, you can, uh, you can uh, adjust uh, by using uh, uh, C Sharp as programming language you will find like uh, uh, Traceability Studio is a kind of uh, development environment itself, uh, helping you uh, provide your own code to, to suggest uh, new traces. It could be by following our uh, semantic indexer or it could be by any other type of, uh, of uh, algorithm that uh, you can, uh, can uh, come across, right? And of course, uh, linking together different types of, uh, of work products. The second approach or the second way we can uh, take advantage of this semantic capability is by identification, is, is for the identification of uh, suspect links. So some of the tools in the market uh, addressing uh, uh, traceability, uh, most of them are uh, of course providing the feature of uh, the, mm, detecting uh, suspect links. However, most of the times it is just based on the uh, uh, date of, uh, of uh, modification of the assets. As soon as this uh, date is modified, then the tool will determine that uh, this, uh, um, this um, uh, element or this link is, is a suspicious link. However, uh, most of the times this uh, change could be not, uh, let's say, a semantic change or a change in the meaning of the, of the item. Uh, some, sometimes I am just uh, uh, moving my class or my block uh, one inch uh, to the left and this is representing a change while there is no semantic uh, change uh, behind. Or it uh, could be that I uh, modify my requirement just to provide text requirement just to provide some uh, uh, changes in the, in the, let's say, in the font or changes like uh, adding a full stop at the end of the, of the requirement. This is not uh, uh, a semantic change. Uh, however, uh, since uh, the actual uh, last modification date of the items is, is, is updated, uh, some of the tools will determine that uh, there is a change uh, and it is uh, meaning a uh, suspect link. In our case, uh, you can have your own algorithms, uh, smart algorithms, to detect that uh, this chain is not a change in the meaning, it is just a change in the format or a change in the, in the layout of the item. So you can, uh, you can uh, configure the tool to say that, well, this is not a uh, change, so please don't advise or don't uh, promote this change as, as a suspicious link. You, you will uh, see this in the, in the live uh, demo. And uh, then the final block of uh, capabilities for the tool is, uh, is uh, about uh, reporting. Uh, the tool provides uh, you with uh, some uh, uh, templates, uh, out-of-the-box uh, out uh, templates. However, we have implemented uh, two additional mechanisms. The first one is by having a, a, a Microsoft Word uh, template that you can, uh, you can uh, uh, generate with the information you, you like. And uh, the final one is by providing you with a kind of API that uh, allows you to program, uh, again in C Sharp, uh, to program your own uh, uh, report. Uh, however, I consider that uh, with this uh, custom report in, in Microsoft Word uh, could be enough to have a, um, a, um, custom reports uh, according to, to the information you want to include in your report. Uh, this, is the, um, this is our integration in, in Microsoft Word where as soon as you install the traceability uh, uh, studio tool, you, uh, you will find a new ribbon on the top, this traceability documentation ribbon uh, that you can find in the top uh, with a lot of different uh, uh, buttons and options. Uh, and uh, with this, uh, just by uh, clicking on these uh, options, you can fill out uh, a template uh, like uh, the one I am showing you on the screen, uh, which is including different, uh, including different um, uh, information. You can change this, you can provide this according to the templates of your company, you can do a lot of different things. And uh, once you click on, uh, on the generation of these uh, reports, you will find how 
this uh, template is uh, populated, uh, is instantiated with information from your from your uh, project. Uh, I will uh, show you this in the in, in the uh, demo in a minute. So um, these are the main uh, characteristics of of the of the tool. You have to. Uh, uh, I would like now to to show you how this tool is is integrated in uh, is integrated in in the rest of the family. Uh, these are the all the tools that you probably know: knowledge management uh, or RQA for for quality uh, assessment and so on and so forth. So, for instance, uh, with a knowledge manager, uh, there is a very tight integration uh, with knowledge manager. I I was mentioning this. Uh, uh, semantic capability to provide uh, new uh, new traces. All this is based on the information probably some of you already know, uh, which is managed uh, on the ontologies uh, in, in KM. Uh, also, the traces that uh, we generate in Traceability Studio uh, are also managed and, and, uh, and stored uh, in, in KM. With regards to the connection with uh, RQA, the Coin Scratch Analyzer, uh, uh, remember that uh, uh, some of the mm, quality rules for requirements are just uh, dealing with, uh, okay, I want all my requirements to be properly traced with other elements. Uh, so far, uh, all this was uh, uh, addressed uh, um, by using the traceability uh, in the requirements management tools that uh, we were capable of connecting in RQA. Now you can create a metric saying, okay, I want uh, my requirements to be traced uh, uh, using the uh, traceability project in traceability studio, and uh, the level of quality could be determined by the lack of uh, of these traces. And uh, verification studio, uh, there is also some connection to this VMV studio. Uh, this is uh, the second uh, brand new tool that uh, we uh, are uh, um, uh, releasing in this uh, second quarter of uh, of uh, 2019. And uh, this is why the next uh, webinar, as uh, as we will introduce you at the end of this webinar, the next webinar will be about uh, this new tool, Verification and Validation Studio. So uh, there will be also, there are also connections to, to this tool. So before uh, before getting to the uh, to the demo of the tool, let me just uh, mention a little bit uh, what is the roadmap of Traceability Studio. Uh, the tool is not yet in the market. So today, let's say that uh, we are uh, I will be showing you a beta version of this product. The product is intended to be in the market uh, uh, before the end of the second quarter of this year. So something like uh, mid June, you will have the tool ready in the market. This will be the first uh, version of the tool. Um, uh, this version will be called uh, version 18.3, uh, but of course this is, a, this is a brand new tool, but it is not version 1 because uh, uh, this is a tool within the systems engineering suite and uh, uh, all the tools in the suite are having a, a coherent uh, uh, naming or versioning. So this is why it will come together with the rest of 18.3 uh, 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 versions. So the first version of Traceability Studio will be called version 18.3. Then after that, uh, the next uh, major release will be uh, in the first quarter of next year. And this is what uh, we will be calling version 20, uh, integrated uh, in the version 20 of the rest of the tools, of course, and of course, uh, including a better integration with this uh, uh, system training suite, and also a better integration with uh, Microsoft Office, uh, multi-column and um, interactive uh, uh, traceability matrices, uh, more semantics uh, to even help uh, even more uh, the, the engineers when they are dealing with this tedious activity and the integration with uh, more tools uh, could be probably like uh, Siemens or, or Capella uh, tools. And of course, um, many other uh, capabilities that uh, could be coming beyond these, uh, especially Susco traceability. This is something we have uh, just started uh, to, 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 um, to deal with. Uh, just to provide uh, uh, evidences and to provide a connection even to SUS code, which is providing a, a, a full, uh, uh, let's say, life cycle traceability. So now let me just uh, start with a, a demo of, uh, of this tool. I hope, uh, I, I hope you like it. For most of you, it will be the first time you see this, uh, this tool. Uh, this demo is, is recorded, but uh, I will be commenting uh, this, uh, this recording along the, the demo. Let's go for it. <coughs> so the first step is to start the tool. The tool will be connecting to a relational database. In this case, it is a SQL Server database. So I connect to my database. 
this database, uh, of course, uh, uh, the format of this database is exactly the same as the format of uh, our databases for Knowledge Manager or our database for Requirements Quality Analyzer or, or the RAT. So it is meaning that if you were a user of all of our tools in the in the system training suite, you don't uh, need uh, different databases. All the uh, databases you are uh, currently uh, using are databases available for for Traceability Studio. You just have to upgrade uh, to uh, our databases in version 18.3. So this is the information about the project. And now these are the so far five uh, modules in the project. And uh, this is the this is the map as well. So for each of the modules, you can see which are the uh, the source and the target connected, and uh, how many items in in this uh, in source and target, and how uh, many of them are already connected by this uh, percentage. So now let me uh, just uh, add a, a new module and uh, a new uh, traceability module. So the first step is to connect uh, to the two sources, uh, just to have it uh, quick. Uh, the two sources are already connected, uh, a Simulink uh, model and a requirement uh, module indoors. So once the, the sources are connected, I just uh, pick uh, source and target, provide a name. An optional description as well, if you wish. And uh, this mo this model uh, this uh, module will be uh, managing whatever kind of uh, of traces. It's important to mention that, uh, as you can see here, uh, you can add or edit or remove, or you can you can deal with uh, with your different types of uh, of traces. So if uh, if the traces that we provide out of the box uh, are not what you expect, you can generate your own types of of traces. So this uh, this new uh, this new traceability module, of course, uh, uh, is including a number of uh, items, and uh, the percentage of these uh, uh, of traces is zero because it is just uh, created. And of course, in the graphical representation, in the project map, you have now a new box and a new, a new arrow representing this, uh, this new uh, traceability module. Now I will show you how uh, new traces could be added very easily. Uh, on both uh, sides of the screen, you have uh, panels representing the content of, uh, of this uh, of source and target. There are no traces so far, but creating a new uh, trace, it is uh, as simple as uh, finding uh, the elements that uh, you want to trace. You have uh, filtering and uh, searching uh, capabilities in both uh, sides, first in the model and now in the requirement. So I find a suitable requirement to be traced, and I just uh, click on the Add button on the center. So as you can see now, we have our first uh, trace for this module. And this is just representing a trace between these two elements. Uh, on the left, it was a model. So you, you can uh, have the textual definition of the model, but also you can find uh, the graphical representation. On the right, it was a requirement. Uh, in this view, we are just uh, showing the, uh, the, the text uh, uh, behind this requirement. So in this way, you can create manually, create uh, new traces, you can delete uh, or edit uh, traces and so on. All the panels in the tool are dockable panels. You can, uh, you can just uh, pin the panels or you can move the panels as, as you wish to have, uh, to have it uh, quick. And mainly, uh, mainly if, you have, if you had uh, two screens, as uh, I normally do with, uh, with this tool, uh, it is very easy to move one of these panels to one of the screens and the other panel to the other screen so that uh, you can see more information. Now uh, I'm just uh, using a laptop uh, for this recording, 
So uh, the, the, um, the resolution is not uh, very high, so the information that uh, is shown in both uh, ends of the screen and both sides of the screen is not, uh, is not uh, extensive information. But of course, if you had, as, as I said, uh, two screens, you can move uh, one uh, panel out of the main screen so that uh, you can deal with the two screens in a more comfortable way. Now I have selected a different uh, traceability modu uh, module. This already contains uh, 45 uh, uh, traces, but uh, let's uh, generate a new one. So I'm just uh, filtering uh, on the on the component level, also filtering on the um, on the system level. And uh, it seems that uh, there are requirements in both sides uh, addressing the, the frequency for the communication in our train. So uh, it is very easy, again, to, to generate uh, an, additional, uh, an additional trace. This is uh, manual working. I will show you in a second. I will show you how you can, you can uh, uh, be helped by the tool itself uh, suggesting new traces. So these are the three uh, algorithms uh, we provide out of the box uh, to suggest uh, new traces. And I, uh, as, as I mentioned before, you can even uh, uh, generate your own uh, algorithm. But now I am uh, just uh, using an algorithm, which is uh, helping me to identify two new uh, traces that uh, were not uh, traced uh, so far. Let me show you the reasons. Uh, mainly, this one is, is uh, uh, on the system side. It is uh, representing what is the capacity for the rolling stock uh, component, uh, the capacity in terms of number of passengers. Uh, in, the, in the component side, uh, there, is an, uh, there is a requirement for the car body, uh, meaning or expressing what is the capacity in terms of the number of passengers in this car body. So clearly, these two requirements, uh, first of all, are addressing the same property, the same physical property, the capacity uh, in number of, of passengers are, uh, and additionally, uh, there is a relationship in, in our product breakdown structure. There is a relationship between the rolling stock component, which is the, the main uh, uh, system of interest, and the uh, car body, which is the component addressed in this, in this document. So I will show you how uh, we get uh, this relationship uh, from, uh, from KEM in, in, a, in a minute. So this is, uh, this is mainly the reason why these two requirements has, uh, has been offered to be automatically offered to be traced. In this other example, it is a different property, but it is pretty much the same. Now, both requirements are uh, dealing with the, with the power consumption. And again, the, the, um, the elements that are traced, the air conditioning is a, is a child in the PBS, is a, is a subsystem of the main system, which is the rolling stock component. So this is why this uh, trace is suggested at this level. So if, if these two elements were not connected actually in the Prado Brechtner structure, uh, there, this trace was not uh, suggested uh, by the tool. So let me uh, now show you uh, this in, uh, in Notch Manager. So I changed to Knowledge Manager. Now this tool uh, is Knowledge Manager. So this is the PBS that uh, we are using in, uh, in, this, uh, in this suggestion of elements. As I mentioned, a relationship between the rolling stock component and uh, car body. And uh, this is the cluster, semantic cluster, for the properties that uh, we are dealing with. So the capacity and the power consumption are the two main that uh, I was uh, demoing in, in, in traceability. So this is why these two elements uh, have been uh, suggested. And uh, let me just uh, show you this region in Manager. Uh, where all these algorithms are, uh, are created and managed. And of course, you will find the source code of these algorithms. By following this, uh, this code, if you wish, you can uh, create, you can come up with your own algorithms to, to, trace, uh, to trace elements in different ways. And uh, all these algorithms uh, might have uh, a number of uh, different parameters. In, in my case, the parameters are on the one uh, side the, the properties where these uh, where are the names of these uh, physical properties and the second parameter was the PBS itself, right? So you can generate your own source code. So once you say, okay, yes, I'm happy with these uh, traces, uh, suggested traces, uh, these traces were, uh, uh, were in, in gray background. Now I have just accepted these as, as, uh, as real traces. So the background is, is white. 
Now let me uh, speak a little bit about uh, the suspect link uh, feature of the tool. Uh, now both uh, ends in this uh, traceability uh, module are doors uh, um, uh, modules. So I'm opening uh, doors and uh, uh, the, the component uh, doors module. So let me just uh, uh, do a little change, just uh, adding a knot, uh, which is in fact uh, not so little the change. So it is a huge uh, change it is, uh, just by adding this, this knot. So of course now the semantic uh, of this uh, requirement is changed. So I close uh, doors and I ask uh, traceability to refresh information from doors. Refreshing is, is, is manual, so you have to refresh when, when you want. And uh, now uh, after refreshing, new information is coming and uh, it allows us to evaluate uh, for suspect links. So I evaluate and I find, of course, what I wanted. I, I find a, a suspect link, which is now uh, highlighted or it is in, in, uh, in yellow or orange uh, background. And of course, all the dashboards of the tool uh, are now representing this, uh, but uh, this trace is, is suspect trace. Even the overall project uh, dashboard is representing this uh, one element as a suspect uh, link. So let us uh, now properly address this, uh, this uh, suspect link. The tool can, uh, can show you both uh, versions, the previous version and the new one. And uh, after a quick uh, uh, check, uh, I have uh, said, OK, now I accept uh, this change. Uh, the other options could be to remove the trace or to change accordingly other elements according to this change. But the quick option is, is just to accept. And then the final capability to be presented in this uh, demo is the, um, is the reporting capability. So the input uh, for this reporting is, is the project itself. So you can uh, f uh, find the three options that I mentioned, uh, but uh, I will uh, use a template. Uh, in this screen, you can see how uh, there could be different templates already available for you. This one, the first one in the list is, uh, is a template based on the ISO 26262. But uh, now in this demo, I will just uh, pick another uh, template uh, generated with, uh, with um, Microsoft Word. So let me edit and me open uh, this template. Uh, uh, this is Word uh, now, where there are some uh, uh, fields and attributes uh, in the template. So all these attributes are created and managed by the ribbon on the top. So let me add uh, some additional content uh, to this template. So I click on the ribbon, traceability documentation, and then you can find all the options in this ribbon. So you can uh, write your literals, and you can format as you wish. And by clicking on the uh, buttons on the top, on the ribbon, you can have uh, new attributes on the template. So I want to add the number of traces for my project or the number of unique elements uh, in all the documents I have uh, linked together in this project. Okay, and then a final attribute, the percentage of, uh, of traces. So this is the literal, and now I include the field in the template. Okay, it is done. And I save, uh, save the template and go back to Traceability Studio. So save, close Word. And back in Traceability Studio, I can use this template. So it is a, uh, now the number of elements is, uh, is very short, so the template generation is, is pretty quick. And this is just uh, the same document, uh, but with the information populated. So you can find the table of contents now, uh, including the six uh, models, modules. And of course, here, all the information that I was mentioning, the three new attributes that I have been adding, uh, tables with uh, as many rows as uh, as uh, formal or say or let's say um, traceability models and information about the detailed information about the the traceability modules themselves. 
So the six uh, uh, blocks in the document describing the six uh, tra traceability modules. So all this information is uh, populated automatically from the from from the tube. Okay, so that's uh, all for the video. <coughs> Let me go back uh, to the presentation. Just to say thank you and uh, to give uh, a voice to, to Cecilia. Back to Cecilia. Thank you very much, Jose. I will give you a couple of minutes to write down your question. And meanwhile, I will tell you about our next webinar. It's called A Practical Way to Implement ISO 15288 V and V Processes, the Verification Studio. The verification and validation processes of the ISO 15288 describe in a general way how to perform V and V for a complex system. However, the standard also suggests uh, the need to apply V and V not only to the right side of the V model, but also to the requirements, architecture, and design processes outcomes along the left side of the V model. The webinar will show how you can use the verification studio to implement an integral and complete V and V approach for all kinds of work products and components. The dates for this webinar are the 28th and the 30th of May. Okay, let's see if we have some questions from the participants. Um, can you report on just the third party trace links? Thank you, Cecilia. Uh, I don't know if I fully uh, get uh, what uh, you mean by, by this question. Uh, the report that, uh, we, uh, that uh, we can generate is including all the different uh, links among uh, all the different uh, uh, documents connected. Uh, if what you mean here is if we can uh, get uh, into our tool the current traces that you have already generated uh, and managed by third-party tools, the answer is that uh, uh, not in, in this version, not in version 18.3, but uh, we are preparing a number of different uh, 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 connectors to get information from doors or get information from Rhapsody or get information from OSNC itself. Uh, uh, just to collect uh, uh, traces from other third-party tools and uh, manage uh, these uh, traces with uh, with the traceability studio tool. Okay, thank you. Uh, where is uh, stored the information of the traceability in the authoring tools or in traceability studio? Mm -hmm. Good question. Uh, in fact, um, all these, the traceability studio and the authoring tool are just uh, tools, but it is not, uh, they are not uh, um, storage uh, systems. In fact, uh, what we are doing is we are representing all this information in, in our system knowledge base and in our system asset store, which is meaning that it is the common database that all of our tools are using. So let's say that uh, uh, the information is, is used in our own uh, database. If you are already a user of uh, our tools, RQA or RAT, uh, we will be storing this information, this traceability information, in exactly the same database that uh, you are using today. The only thing you have to do is uh, you have to up, uh, upgrade uh, to version 18.3 and you have to upgrade the version of the database itself because, of course, there are some additional uh, tables and uh, columns. Uh, uh, needed to represent uh, this information. So it is the same database. Okay. Is this possible to automate traceability analysis from the command line? Mm -hmm. uh, another interesting question. In fact, uh, I have to tell, I have to mention that uh, I am not, uh, I'm not sure. I don't know if uh, if Luis is already connect is also connected uh, to the tool. Yeah, Luis is uh, answering, and he's uh, telling us that uh, so far uh, um, it is not uh, this command line uh, option is not uh, is not supported. But of course, it could be a very nice uh, uh, feature to be implemented for version 20. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, can the tool discover automatically other types of traces, like functional requirements? Yeah, in fact, uh, as I said, uh, out of the box, uh, the three algorithms that uh, we have implemented uh, are probably are not addressing this, but uh, uh, you, can, uh, you can generate your own code or you can rely on us to generate uh, code uh, to identify other kind of, uh, of traces. Uh, so, for instance, so we can identify requirements that are sharing uh, uh, actions uh, uh, with uh, similar meaning, let's say, so following uh, our semantic indexing capabilities we can identify also this kind of, uh, of traces. So there is uh, another question here regarding the way we are uh, showing uh, um, the, the information in, in Knowledge Manager, the, the information from the, uh, from the source, uh, data, data sources, let's say. So, uh, uh, of course, uh, this, is the, this is just the first version of, of the tool. Uh, uh, and uh, the question is uh, asking us if, if we will be integrating uh, traceability features uh, in, uh, in other tools via, uh, via OSLC. The answer is uh, yes, of course, why not? So we are, uh, after the release of this uh, first version, we will be collecting uh, needs from uh, all of you, uh, users of, of the tool, so that um, uh, we can implement, uh, absolutely we can implement uh, uh, your needs. And if you need is to, is to have uh, additional or specific uh, uh, plugins or integration with a specific tools, of course, we will address this uh, uh, in, 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 in the coming versions, of course. Thank you very much, Jose. And thank you to all the participants for listening. If you have any further questions or want to receive more information, don't hesitate to contact us by email to contact at reusecompany.com or through our website, uh, reusecompany.com. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.